Well, hello, and welcome back to GetChemistryHelp.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this video, I'm going to work some practice problems that show you how to balance chemical equations. Now, if you haven't yet watched our video lesson on this, I suggest you check that out first. You may also want to go to GetChemistryHelp.com at the link provided and print out the PDF worksheet of all of these equations so you can follow along with me as I work them. Otherwise, let's go ahead and jump in. So our first equation is iron reacts with sulfuric acid to produce iron 3 sulfate and hydrogen gas. So we have several things that we have to balance here. We got to balance iron, hydrogen, and then notice we have a polyatomic that appears on both sides. So we saw in our lesson, whenever you can pick out a polyatomic on both sides, you'll balance that as a single unit. So let's look and see what we have. So we have one iron on the reactant side, two irons on the products. So let's make this two irons. Now we have two hydrogens on the reactants, two hydrogens on the products, that's okay. How about sulfate? We have one sulfate, but we have three sulfates. So let's make this into three sulfates. Okay, well doing that changed it and gave us three times two, six hydrogens. So this needs to become six hydrogens. So I would make that a six by multiplying by three. Okay, so let's just go ahead and make a little table here and make sure everything's balanced out. So we've got iron to balance, hydrogen and sulfate. So on the reactant side, we've got two irons. On the product side, we've got two irons. How about hydrogen? Well, three times two, that's six. And then on the product side, we had three times two, so that's six. How about sulfates? On the reactant, oh, there's three sulfates, so that's three. And the products had three sulfates, so that's three. So there you go, that reaction is balanced. How about our next chemical equation? Sodium acetate reacts with carbonic acid to produce sodium carbonate and acetic acid. Now here again, I notice there are several polyatomics on both sides, so we'll treat those as a single unit. So there's an acetate on both sides, and there are carbonates on both sides. So once again, we'll just go through and work from left to right. So one sodium on the reactants, two sodiums on the products, so I'll try a two here. Now I've got two acetates on the reactants, so I'll make this two acetates by putting a two out front. I've got two hydrogens, and here I've got two hydrogens, and one carbonate, one carbonate. So that seems to do it. So once again, I'll just make a quick little chart. We got sodium, we got acetate, we got hydrogen, and we got carbonate to balance. So on the reactant side versus the product side, we have two sodiums on the reactants two sodiums on the products, two acetates on the reactants, two acetates on the products, two hydrogens on the reactants, two hydrogens on the products, one carbonate on the reactants, and one carbonate on the products. So good job, we got that one balanced. Number three, ammonium phosphate reacts with lead four nitrate to produce lead 4 phosphate and ammonium nitrate. Now here again we obviously have several polyatomics that appear on both sides of the reaction. So let's go ahead and mark those. I've got ammonium on the reactants, ammonium on the products. I've got phosphate on the reactants and phosphate on the products. I've even got nitrate on both sides as well. So let's just go through and start from left to right. So three ammoniums on the reactants, only one ammonium here, so I'll make this a three. One phosphate on the reactants, oh, four phosphates on the product, so we have to make this four phosphates. Okay, but as soon as I make that four phosphates, I also change the ammoniums. So now I have four times three ammoniums, that's 12, so we have to make this 12 ammoniums. Well, by making that 12 ammoniums, that also makes 12 nitrates. So here I have four nitrates, so to turn four nitrates into 12, I'd have to multiply by three. Well, now that makes three leads, but that's okay because the product side also has three leads. So that seems to do it. So let's just double check it here, make a quick table. 
ammoniums, phosphates, lead, and nitrate. So on the reactant side, what do we have? I've got four times three, 12 ammoniums. On the product side, I've got 12 ammoniums. How about phosphate? On the reactants, I've got four phosphates. On the products, I have four phosphates. Lead, well, three leads on the reactants, three leads on the products. Nitrate, I've got three times four, so that's 12 nitrates on the reactants. And here we have 12 nitrates on the products. So good job again. How about this reaction? This is butane reacting with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. So we've got a combustion reaction here. Now notice there's oxygen in one place on the reactant side, but oxygen appears in two places on the product side. So we learned in our lesson on balancing that that means we want to balance oxygen last. So I'll just mark this here with a little star just to remind myself to balance it last. Okay, so four carbons on the left. Let's make this four carbons on the right. 10 hydrogens on the left, two on the right, so to make that into a 10, I'll multiply it by five. How about oxygens? Now I've got two on the left. How about on the right? Four times two is eight, plus five times one is 13. So I've got two oxygens on the left and 13 oxygens on the products. Well, there isn't an easy whole number that will turn two into 13. The only thing that turns two into 13 is either 13 halves or six and a half. So two times six and a half will give me 13. But remember, whenever you balance, you have to have whole numbers. Well, the way to get rid of this half is to multiply everything, the entire equation, by two. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna turn this into two butanes. Two times six and a half will become 13 oxygens. Two times four will become eight carbon dioxides. 2 times 5 would become 10 waters. So let's see if that did it. We got carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So on the reactants versus the products, how many carbons do I have? 2 times 4, that's 8. How about on the products? 8 carbons, perfect. How about hydrogens? 2 times 10, that's 20. How about on the products? 10 times 2, that's 20. Oxygens, well, 13 times 2 would be 26. On the products, I've got 8 times 2, that's 16, plus 10 more is 26. So there we go, we balanced number 4. Number 5, phosphoric acid reacts with hydrochloric acid to produce phosphorus pentachloride and water. So this one, I don't see any kind of polyatomics or anything, but I do notice hydrogen now appears in two different places on the left-hand side versus the right. So I'm gonna to try to balance the hydrogen last. So let's go ahead and balance phosphorus. One phosphorus, one phosphorus, four oxygens. Well, let's make this four oxygens. How about chlorine? One chlorine, five chlorines. So let's make this one five chlorines. Well, now that I did that, let's try and do our hydrogen last. So I've got three hydrogens plus five hydrogens. That's eight hydrogens. And the right side is eight hydrogens. So that worked out pretty easy for us once we knew to do the hydrogens last. So let's just double check it. So we're balancing hydrogen, phosphorus, oxygen, and chlorine. Let's check both sides here. So three hydrogens plus five hydrogens, that's eight hydrogens on the reactants. And then four times two is eight hydrogens on the products. How about phosphorus? One on the reactants and one on the products. Oxygen, four oxygens on the reactants and four oxygens on the products five chlorines on the reactants, and five chlorines on the products. So again, the key to this one was recognizing that hydrogen appeared in two different substances on the same side of the equation. So that told us we wanted to balance hydrogen last instead of balancing it first as you might have normally by just going from left to right. 
How about number six? Mercury 2 hydroxide reacts with arsenic acid to produce mercury 2 arsenate and water. Well, there are a few different things going on here. One is, of course, there's a polyatomic right here. Also, if you remember back to our lesson, if you see hydrogen and hydroxide on one side of an equation and water on the other, we can consider the water as a hydrogen with a hydroxide. And then we'll balance the hydrogens and hydroxides separately. So we won't balance the hydrogens in the acid together with the hydrogens in the hydroxide. We'll balance these separately. So let's look. One mercury on the reactants, three mercuries on the products. So I'll try this, three mercuries. Now I've got three times two hydroxides. So that's six. So this side needs six hydroxides. Now that gave me six hydrogens. So let's make this six hydrogens. So two times three would make that six. That creates two arsenates. So this has to be two arsenates, and it is. So it looks pretty good. Let's go through and just double check. We've got mercury, we've got hydroxide, we've got hydrogen, and we've got arsenate. So let's check both sides here. The reactant side, I've got three mercuries. The product side has three mercuries. I've got three times two, six hydroxides on the reactants. I've got six hydroxides on the products. Two times three, six hydrogens on the reactants. Six hydrogens on the products. And last one, arsenate. Here's two arsenates on the reactants. And here's two on the products. Okay, our last two. Perchloric acid reacts with tetraphosphorus decaoxide to produce phosphoric acid and dichlorine heptaoxide. So I notice right away that there are a bunch of oxygens on both sides. So that means that's the element we're going to want to balance last. Otherwise, we'll just go through and just start working left to right and see what we can do. So one hydrogen on the reactants three hydrogens on the products. So let's try a three here. Three chlorines on the reactants, two chlorines on the products. Well, the easiest way to make three and two the same is just to find the least common multiple. So the least common multiple of three and two is six. So let's make this six chlorines by multiplying by three. Let's make this six chlorines by changing this to a six. Well, now that changed my hydrogens to six hydrogens. So let's make this six hydrogens by multiplying by two. How about phosphorus? Four phosphorus. Oh, only two phosphorus. So we need to make this into four. So scratch that out and make that four phosphorus. Well, now that changed a few other things. Now that changed the hydrogen to be 12 hydrogens. So let's change this one again and make it 12. Now that changed the chlorines to be 12 chlorines. So to make this 12 chlorines, I've got to multiply 2 by 6. So now the hydrogens, the chlorines, and the phosphorus are all balanced. The last thing is the oxygens. So the left side has 12 times 4. That's 48 oxygens here, plus another 10 oxygens here. So that's 58 oxygens on the reactant side. How about the product side? We've got 4 times 4. That's 16 oxygens. And then we've got six times seven, that's 42 oxygens. So that's also 58 oxygens. So amazingly, that did work out. So let's just go through again and double check everything. So we're balancing hydrogen, chlorine, oxygen, and phosphorus. So on the reactant side, I've got 12 hydrogens. On the product side, I've got four times three, 12 hydrogens. How about chlorine? Well, again, on the reactants, I've got 12 chlorines. On the product, I've got 6 times 2, 12 chlorines. Oxygens, we just checked, and there was 12 times 4 is 48, plus 10 more is 58 oxygens. The product side, 4 times 4 is 16, plus 6 times 7 is 42 more, so that's also 58 oxygens. Phosphorus, we've got four on the left, and we've got four phosphorus on the right. 
So that one was a tricky one, but it did work out. And again, the key was, do the oxygens last? Otherwise, we just kept going back and forth, and the last thing we did was the oxygens because it appeared in multiple places on both sides of the equation. Okay, our last equation to balance. C8H10 reacts with oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and water. Well, again, oxygen appears in two places on the right side, so we're going to do oxygen last. So let's do carbon first. So eight carbons on the left, only one on the right, so we'll make this an eight. Ten hydrogens on the left, two on the right, so we'll make that ten by multiplying by five. Now we'll try our oxygen. So two on the left, eight times two is sixteen, plus five is twenty-one. Okay, so again, we've got two oxygens on the left, twenty-one oxygens on the right. Well, obviously there isn't a whole number I can multiply two by to get twenty-one. So I can multiply it by 21 and a half or multiply 2 by 10 and a half. Well, again, if you get a fraction like this that ends in a half, we're going to multiply everything by 2 to get rid of that. So I'm going to multiply this by 2. Multiplying 10 and a half by 2 becomes 21. Multiplying 8 by 2 becomes 16. Multiplying 5 by 2 becomes 10. So let's just check this out and make sure it worked. So on the reactant side, how many carbons do I have? Two times eight, 16. On the products, 16. How many hydrogens? On the reactants, two times 10, that's 20. On the products, 10 times two, that's 20. How about oxygens? 21 times two, there's 42 oxygens. On the products, I've got 16 times 2, that's 32, plus 10 more, so that's 42 also. Well, there you go. Well, I hope you enjoyed these practice problems on balancing chemical equations. If you did enjoy it, click on that thumbs up button and leave me a comment down below. And I'll see you back here next time at GetChemistryHelp.com. Thank you.